do well to like and share to your loved ones so that they can receive the blessing of what God is making available from this platform. I had a dream where a man walked up to me and told me that um, what my father passed through is small compared to what I will pass through. Now, that is what we call an announcement. Satan does not walk except he first announces. Now, this will give you an insight into how to interpret some of the things you see in the realm of the spirit. If you notice this town crier effect in your life, maybe in a dream, in a vision, and you see this town crier effect, is a sign of the drums of war. The reason why we need to read the signs adequately is because when it's better for you to start preparing for the war before the actual war. It's just like it is easier to prayerfully stop your husband from getting at liking beer than to be praying for him to be delivered from alcohol. Are you with me? So when there are signals, you need to take up your journey before the actual manifestation begins. So what just took place right now is the town crier effect. is the trumpet, which is an announcement. Okay, that day was on a Wednesday. I, I went to the church and the song leader was singing Victorious songs. I sang and danced. I thought that was all of it. One year after, I, I got into the university and I went in as a direct entry student, 200 level. And while in school, I noticed I actually came across brethren who praise and all that. So I was able to join the link. And then we were praying. I was coming up spiritually. And then one night, I just woke up to pray. And then I opened my mouth. I discovered that I was accusing Jesus. I began to accuse God. And then I would hold on. I was like, what's happening to me? I thought that I thought that was all of it. When I got to um, 300 level, I, I had an encounter in the night where someone touched me at my right breast and then now, there was I'm a deposit. I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, that's the spirit of blasphemy, okay? Seeking to take root in the life of a believer. I, I, want, to, I want to ask, were you born again all this while that all this thing was, was I was happening? just coming up, yes. Okay, we're born. Mm. Now, so she was born again, but having these experiences, okay? Go on. When I had that encounter, there was a deposit. That day, I, I went to the chapel. We were worshipping. And then I felt a presence. And the, a hand touched me there. And something came out chapel. of me. I was worshipping. You were worshipping God, yes. Jehovah. Your spirit was lifted to him. In the same atmosphere of worship, a strange hand touched you. And you felt it. Yes, now, can you describe this touch? Was it a physical touch? No, I just, I was actually, my eyes were closed. I just felt the presence you, you and I felt, felt the it touch. I opened my eyes, I didn't see the presence. You didn't see anybody, you felt the touch. I just felt something living me. Worship. Her physical eyes were closed, consumed. She was sucked into the Holy Ghost. And in the midst of that moment, she felt a presence and a touch. And there was this joy that filled my heart at that moment. When I left the hall, the chapel to the hostel, and I stepped my feet to get into the hostel, I felt like an arrow was shot behind my back. She felt like an arrow was shot behind her back. And that was the beginning of a strange headache. And that was the beginning of a strange what? Headache. So now, we me, uh, You see, as we proceed in the teaching, we will come to realize how that the spirit realm, though invincible, is superior to the natural realm. And that means the spirit realm can influence, can affect the natural realm. But it is nothing natural you can do that can affect the spiritual realm. You can shout in the natural and you'll be amazed that spirits are not aware. <laughs> May your capacity not be summed up in the natural in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> so she left church, experienced God, encountered God. She was happy. But her encounter that she had with God in church, in fact, she felt a presence and a touch. All of that investment that she felt in church did not insulate her from the arrow. Are you there? So, and that arrow became the beginning of an everlasting headache. I'd like us to put into inventory all these things that we're saying because when we are done with theory, we will enter into practicals. Maybe what she's saying here is a description of the experiences that people have in the congregation and online. So, we will like everyone to pay rapt attention. So that happened and then I didn't believe in speaking in tongues but because of where I was coming from. And then eventually I, I got baptized by the Holy Spirit. It, I was just in the chapel worshiping and it hit me. And then that actually helped my prayers. It was about the, the, the warfare was quite light to bear. 
And then um, eventually I, I left school. When I finished school, I came into this city. When I came to Benue, I, all the wild things were happening to me. I was not under any submission. I was just on my own, hitting on there and there and there. And then when I came to the city, I, I was able to come across um, RCN. I actually met Daddy in, um, in Joss, and that was how I was able to trace um, RCN, and I came to RCN. And then one of the situations, I, I, one of the things I encountered while in Benue before I got married was that um, one night I, I woke up to pray, and I saw two different groups of people having a meeting. And now, the first... how did you see them? Was it that you were in a trance, you had a vision. Can you explain the experience to us? Actually, my, my eyes were closed. I was praying while I was seeing it. So that was a vision. The difference between a vision and a trance is this. In a vision, your spiritual senses pop open. And even if your physical eyes are open, you will still see that scene. The spiritual vision is not as clear as your physical vision. But the snapshots are in your spirit, but it looks as if you are seeing it outside. Uh, it is clear enough for you to know what you saw, but it's not as clear as your natural vision. And you are capable of these visions whether your eyes are open or closed. Secondly, it is a trance if before you saw the vision, you felt something like sleep. And then as you were falling into sleep, the vision snapped. And that's why when you read your Bible, if it's a trance, you always see the word fall. Falling into a trance. It means an anointing comes upon you that switches off your physical senses and switches on your spiritual senses. So the description of what she's talking about here is a vision. Her eyes were closed and she could see two camps. Okay? And the first camp was saying that um, this spiritual height I want to attain is not possible. The second camp was saying that um, if we don't kill her, we can't have access to her household. So the only thing now, is now, to let's, kill her. Let's, let's, um, first and foremost, I'd like you to understand that what she saw the vision, the enablement, the spiritual insight that she was capable of seeing was occasioned by the Holy Ghost. And in this case, the Holy Spirit was giving her the ability to function as a spy. If you were there when we did the Watchman series, I showed us that there were three things that watchmen watch for. Because the function of a watchman is to function like a CIA agent, like a Mossad agent, like a spy for Jesus. We watch over the activity and the trends that take place in the kingdom of darkness. We watch over the activity of angels. We watch over the activities and the voice of God. These are the three levels that our watchman ministry covers. So this vision that she was given of God is giving her intelligence, is operating by that vision in the capacity of a spy and she is entering into the intelligence of that which Satan is seeking to accomplish in her life. Are you there? Now, don't forget, we said that when you receive announcements, it means it's time for war. Two, when you feel the presence of arrows as he felt, it means what? Prepare for war. Three, when the Lord gives you a revelation and gives you the ability to spy on the activities of the enemy, it means it is time for war. Now, many of us receive intelligences on what Satan intends to accomplish and uh, we sleep over it and we discuss the re revelations with our colleagues. The revelations are not for discussion. In fact, if you are wise, you will only share it with people that are in league with you in the ways of warfare. May you not trivialize intelligence, spiritual intelligence in the name of Jesus. Once upon a time, a man saw a dog come bite him in a dream. And he woke up like we normally do and then we say, I cancel in the name of Jesus. That's not an effective prayer to deal with the matter. Are you with me? That you saw it means it is already in the womb of the spirit. Awaiting the fullness of the gestation period so that it will become a reality. And what you need to do, your efforts are supposed to be the efforts of an abortion. To abort it from the spirit realm. And most of us feel that when you wake up and say, I cancel in the name of Jesus. It's enough strength to accomplish an abortion. 
So that was how he prayed. I cancel in the name of Jesus. Until eight days later, a physical dog came and beat him. On the same hand, he saw a dog beat him. Eventually, he was hospitalized. And they were trying to manage the infection. And the infection was spreading so fast. And the doctors could not manage it. After three days, they told the man that, hey, your problem is spiritual. It's not medical. You know, when doctors come, come to, the, their, to their wit's end and they open up and say, we don't have an answer for you in medical science. The fact that the guy got the revelation did not save his life. He died a day later. This was something he saw that he trivialized and the intelligence did not translate to deliverance or to redemption. May you not be careless about intelligence. So, you saw two things, two camps. Can you refresh our memory so that okay. I can read the scripture? I, I, the two camps, one was saying, this spiritual height, you can't attend it. Second camp said okay, the second camp said, the, if you don't kill me, if we don't kill her, we can't, they can't have access to my household. So, she is the defender of the household. Some of you sitting in this place, you may not be able to interpret your warfare accurately because you are seeing only yourself. But Satan is seeing you as a, a passageway into a colony. And so the people living in sin in your, in your family are excelling. People trading in illegal business are prospering. And you that has given your life to Christ, <laughs> it seems nothing is working. Is there anyone in this congregation that, that feels, okay, that connects with what Now, you see, most of us are too selfish. You consider yourself alone in your prayer. You don't understand that we are interrelated. Do you understand that? So because of the assignment on your life, you are the gateway to your family and that explains the kind of warfare that comes around your life. But you do not see from that perspective. You normally see from an individual, self-centered, selfish perspective, breakthrough perspective. If I'm not doing well, then nothing is happening. Meanwhile, the reason why many members of your family are still alive is because you kept that gate and Satan could not enter. So he has come to a conclusion of the fact, meanwhile, she was just, she just got baptized in the Holy Ghost. She was beginning to learn how to gain ascendancy. Satan knows that he has an investment in her household and her life with Jesus was going to constitute an obstacle to that investment that he has. So a meeting was held quickly that we need to kill this one before she becomes strong. Lest she hinders us from entering into the territory that has been dedicated to us. I'm trying to make you see that <laughs> except God opens your eyes you will not see this cosmic warfare play out. And whether you are a seer or not, Paul has already made us see it in scripture by saying that we wrestle. Please help me tell your neighbor, we wrestle. He didn't say we are bound to wrestle. He didn't say whether you want to wrestle. He didn't say, will you be enlisted? Will you, should we put your name in the wrestling? Too late. We wrestle. And the moment you accept it, you are in the right frame of mind. And grace will speak on your behalf in Jesus' name. Yes, please go on. And then one of the experiences I had then was um, I was sleeping. I, was, I used to pray so much that even while I'm sleeping, my mouth is moving. And then and I felt a finger. Now, should I explain that? I hope you know that the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. Jesus is an intercessor. Two-thirds of the Godhead are intercessors. And whereas your natural body can sleep, your spiritual body does not sleep, your spirit does not sleep. And that's why you dream. Because dreams are evidence of the fact that uh, messages have been passed across through the canvas of your spirit. So in the heart, of, I don't know how many people are like me, it's when you sleep deep, maybe you had night vigil, you couldn't rest during the day, you were walking throughout the day and you slept tired like a log of wood, that's when you have the clearest of dreams. Are you like me? And the day you, you rested where you didn't, you, you were not fatigued, you will not have anything. But when it becomes, you are so tired. Do I? Yep. All right. So just, just to show you that your spirit component doesn't go to sleep. The allocation that your spirit has and all spirits within the divine realm, the allocation they have is called rest. Rest. Not sleep, but rest. The Bible says that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he wanders about in dry places seeking rest and find it not. Only demonic spirits do not have allocation for rest. Is it, is it in your Bible that when God finished creation on the seventh day, he did what? He rested. That's the way of spirits. So you sleep, they rest. However, I need to explain to you what rest means because 
Well, for now, take it as rest. Until our Bible study, then you understand that rest. And your human spirit too must be subjected to that economy of rest in order for your human spirit to experience refreshing. Okay? All right. Go on. The, the finger actually shot my mouth. The what? The, the finger shot my mouth. A finger appeared yes. and shot your mouth. Yes. You were high in spirit. I was and almost were... falling. I finished praying. Okay. And yeah. then I was about to sleep. The sleep was coming. And then I was lying down close to my cousin. And I felt a finger. The finger felt like her own. So when I felt the finger, I woke up and tapped her. I said, why did you close my mouth? She said, I was sleeping. How did you mean I touched you? So that's when I knew it was not now, listen, ordinary. When your spiritual efforts begin to affect the kingdom of darkness, Satan will show you signs. And just in case you see the signs, because I'm going to itemize all the signs, you are going to begin to see if Satan believes that what you are doing is going to constitute major losses for him in his kingdom, he will show you signs. Maybe one of these days we'll bring our papa, our father, the great evangelist, Pamashika, to tell us how he handled the demons of these territories. I heard he was a one-man sport. Hallelujah. <laughs> when your efforts begin to affect the kingdom of darkness, Satan shows signs. Are you there? When you see the signs that Satan shows, it is an encouragement for you to huh? do more. Oh, you're not with me. All right, go on. So I woke up and prayed and slept back. So after the encounter of the camps, I, two weeks after that particular experience, I, I had an encounter with a lady who came with a syringe. Came and with, a with, syringe. Oh, came yeah. with a syringe. Syringe. You know those, that thing nurses use to inject people? I don't know when last I had that experience. So long ago now. Hallelujah. Those of you that are children of nurses, like myself, because the moment my mother checks your temperature and it trespasses the threshold, <laughs> oh my God, she blesses you with syringe. May the Lord give you understanding. So she saw in the spirit a lady with a syringe. And what was she doing? Was she a doctor? Shadi came struggling with me to inject me. She wanted to inject her. Now, was it in a dream that yes. you had this experience? Yes, sir. And then we began to fight. We struggled. We struggled for a long time. And then when it looked like I had, I had finished fighting her, she was actually on the ground. And I wanted to run. My hand, this hand now was at the back. And she held me and injected she me. She injected. So, what were the symptoms that began to happen after you received a dose from the syringe? So, after the injection, I... I wasn't really sick, but I was drying up. And so much that I, I was losing touch. Now listen, there are infirmities that are demonically caused. As much as you want to be that clean pastor that doesn't want to get dirty with demons, you know, that's the concept of pastoring right now. It's like a Western mode of pastoring where you come with a ponytail and a bow tie and you are speaking fine, looking fine. Your, your abada is always iron. And you are showing the, your, your members the possibility of a better life. That's, 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 that's a prank. In fact, we went for a conference and the lead minister of, that convened the meeting said, let us accept that there's no devil. I will strip him of his power. So I, 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 I had to leave. Because you think that Satan ceases to exist because you accepted that he doesn't exist. So Satan is a figment of your imagination. Because the idea of successful preaching is clean preaching where we don't get dirty. So I have, you know, I'm so calm, cool, co co collected. I have a pin up time so that I don't even hold something in handheld and I'm just, you know, talking about possibilities. That, you know, you dream and then dream big. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus was not a motivational preacher. And it will interest you to know that Jesus spoke more about devils than he spoke about angels. The cosmic war is real. The moment she was injected with the content on, of this spiritual syringe, she didn't feel sick, but she began to emaciate. The spiritual realm can regulate the natural realm. And she was and is a bona fide believer, suffering from the torture that was occasioned from the kingdom of darkness. In Plateau State. 
Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. For, just follow our, our story. So with time, I began to feel, my heart began to, not really that it was aching. There was this weight I could feel on my heart that my breath at times feels like, like I'm choking. And then um, one of the nights, I, 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 we went for mission prayers in our Reverend Shala's house. We were sleeping around, the prayers was to start by 12, 12 a.m. And around 11, around 11, past few minutes past 11, I, we were lying down, the ladies in the room were waiting, and we were lying, sleeping. And later I noticed that I, my body was on the bed and my spirit was up. Our spirit had left her body. And the body could, was still on the bed waiting for prayer. But the engine that drives the body was floating. So I, I could see the ladies sleeping. Everyone was sleeping. And one of the ladies, and I heard her voice say, called my name. And she said, are you going to go just like that? And then from nowhere, I, I just, I don't know which of me, whether it was the spirit that shouted Jesus. And then I, I came back to my body. Thank God for up. intercessors. People that are sensitive to the spirit. The lady had peeked that she had floated. I think God had mercy on, on Pastor Shala. Because if, if they discovered that morning that she was dead, but she had gone. That's the experience of death. That's how you will know that it's not sickness that kills, it's death that kills. And her spirit was comfortably outside of her body. And she didn't even know when the initial disconnection took place. Can you see the progression of the attack from the arrow to the scenario? Because the agenda is to kill her now. And then they succeeded in administering the content of the syringe. And now she had a near death experience. Yes? Go on. Okay, so when that happened, the, the whole experience continued. I, I got to a point where I, I couldn't feel this world. You couldn't feel this yeah. world? So at times I had to hit the wall in my room. That's when your spirit is on the edge. When your spirit is on the edge, even when you take in food, you not feel your stomach. You had that experience? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's as if you. You add the food into a, into, into a vacuum. You can feel yourself. The spirit is on the edge. If you find yourself in that condition, don't depend on your personal prayer anymore. You will need to get prayer resources from other quarters. Because your spirit is on the edge. Okay? Yeah, so much that at, there are times that when I'm passing on that will come side, in anyone at all, if I see, if I know that you're walking the path of dead, I could see you, you could and, see know. You and, and, know. and know. She was already on the edge, so there were powers of discernment from that other world that were already active. And she could know who didn't have much longer to labor on this side of heaven. And all these experiences were happening to a tongue-talking, prayerful believer because I know how they used to pray. But the activity of darkness was yet at work. Are you with me? You are not with me. So when I, I left, I left uh, Makodi to just, when my mom saw me, she said, Hope you are not okay. I said, I'm fine. She said, Look at you, you don't look good. Let's go to the hospital. Went to the hospital, and um, while I was in the bed, the first thing they gave me was drip. While I was in the hospital bed, an elderly man, I, I was almost sleeping, an elderly man appeared by my side and then held the, the, the drip. Yes, and held it. And I stood up, I removed it. I told the nurses, I'm going home. That was how I left. My mother insisted, Hope, let's go to the hospital. It was so much that they had to take me to the hospital and the machine scanned me. The only thing they could find was malaria. And they said the malaria was not much. So one of the doctors, um, he's quite spiritual. He now asked me, he said, are you about to marry? I said, yes. He said, are you sure someone is not following you? There? Because this thing is not normal. Can you go back to prayers? And at that time, I had lost hope. I was almost getting weak and weary and down. She was accepting that death in her soul. You know, I told you, that if you lose in your soul, you will lose on the ground. Huh? If we have time at the end of this series, what to do if you, maybe God says, all right, the last thing you will do before you come to heaven is to write a book. And then you have not yet written the book and death comes. There's a way to drive death away. Right? There's a way to do it and we need to look at it, look at the scriptures and find out because the promise that God gave in the world is that with long life, you will satisfy. Are you with me? Uh, when you are thirsty and you drink water, if you come to the point of satisfaction, you will know. You there? 
That's how life is. Life is a dream. If you have not yet come to the point of satisfaction, it is illegal. It's not accepted for you to be poured out like a drink offering. So, death doesn't have power to snatch you. And we are going to establish it from the word of God. Because the Bible says, by reason of strength, you can prolong it. Eh? You can prolong it. By reason of strength. And I've been studying that strength for years. But it is obvious that Parmashik has found that strength. He has found that strength. Even though we say it's 90 something, we know it's more than 90 something. He has found the strength. You can live as if death doesn't exist. Are you with me? Now, so when Satan insists to take you out, there are things you need to do to ensure that he does not succeed. And we're going to focus on that as a lecture in one of the evenings. Because the Bible says, with long life shall he satisfy you. And I assure you, I'm not yet satisfied in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, sister. Yeah, as I've said, I actually lost hope so much that I, I was looking for a picture to give my household for obituary. Uh -uh. Yes. She was I, looking for a picture to give them for obituary. So one of the days, my husband called me and said he was coming down to Joss. And when he came to the house, he, was, he said, we're going to pray that night. We're going to have a vigil. And at that point, even if you're reading the Bible, it wasn't making sense. Prayer wasn't making sense. I would just be staring at you like this. And then that day when he came, he was praying and he was praying so hard. And I looked at him and slept off. No, that's an evangelist king. He's a man of prayer. <laughs> and I, I heard a voice woke me up. Were you married then? No. So he you, that's a prayer of love. Kaboko igaiteka. Isabaka. And I heard a voice called out my name and say, Hope, wake up, pray. And then I came back and... There's enough angelic assistance available. If you give God half a chance in a time of war, he wants to help. He wants to assist. The Bible reveals that it's God that teaches our hands to fight and our fingers to war. Please help me tell your neighbor you don't know how to fight. You don't know. And your previous experience on the battlefield is not an advantage. You need to learn God and learn from God every time you are engaging. Preach to them again, you don't know how to fight. Yes? So I, I woke up, I joined him, we began to pray. And I told him, I, I just have a feeling like I can't make it. He now told me, you, I will marry you. Oh. I will marry you alive. <laughs> Kabuti Amansa. So that actually was, then it was funny, actually I laughed. Because I wasn't seeing the possibilities. Adam Pastor Kings, take a mic, take a mic. Take a mic. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find out the source of this, your conviction. Please, come and educate us. What was the, the reason for your strength? That's Pastor King. <laughs> yeah, so why were you so convinced that you will marry this damsel in the midst of death? Praise the Lord. Um, the Lord had spoken to me about her okay. and has shown me a picture of her wedding. So I was convinced that the Lord has spoken and it will come to pass. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, things beyond the reach of the present. This substance can come in different forms. It can come in form of an impression. It can come in form of a vision. It can come in form of the voice of the Lord. It can come in form of an inner knowing. But there is always an evidence to show that something that you cannot verify with your physical senses is a reality. And we are people of faith. So he had gone deep in the spirit and saw the wedding. So he was speaking from the substance. Say, well, I don't know about you, but I will marry you. That was powerful love. I salute you, um, <laughs> Pastor Kings. For those of you that are not married, love like that. Let your love be like that. You want to marry a lady, she's sickly, even almost giving up, and the guy never lost hope. He was strong like a tower. Can we give it up for, for Kings? Oh, my. <laughs> So um, you can stand on your feet, but don't, don't leave the area. Hallelujah. When the devil wants to take you on, he knows you are fortified in Jesus. He will need to advance a course of deception. And you can see the attempts he made 
in the book of Genesis chapter 3, I'd like you to turn your Bible. Because what is wrong with Sister Hope that made her believe that she was going to die was because Satan was successful in establishing what we call a stronghold in her mind. Somebody says stronghold. All right, let us check that scripture again and get a proper definition for stronghold. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons of the flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. So you will see strongholds in verse 5. Verse 5, please. For we are destroying sophisticated arguments. Sophisticated arguments. That's what strongholds are sophisticated arguments so the devil brought arguments and in order for him to accomplish selling these arguments to the heart of our sister what he did was that he launched an attack in form of an arrow and the arrow began to deplete her strength they were able to succeed again in a spiritual attempt and the content strange content of a syringe was administered she started becoming sickly and weak so there were evidences of debt encroaching that's the argument so the efficacy of the attempts was consummated the moment she accepted those arguments to become her reality she became bound and her spirit could float so even though the man of faith came all the way from according to tell her about their future their future in ministry that god has shown me you are going to come with me we will conquer together I have seen your face in my dreams. You see, it was impossible for her to believe those words of faith because Satan had accomplished what we call the stronghold. Now listen to me, listen to me. It doesn't matter your background. Maybe there was poverty littered across your family generationally and all of that. And that has formed a stronghold in your life. You can be speaking in tongues and doing many powerful things, but that limitation will exist as long as the stronghold is not defeated. Are you still with me? So we want to defeat some strongholds tonight. Is it possible for us to do that? Because all of us in our own right, because of the uniqueness of the presence of God in your human spirit, we are supposed to be a pioneer of something in God. A pioneer. It will take a man that is that secured or found confidence in Christ to be capable enough to become a pioneer to do something that you have not seen anybody anywhere on earth ever done it will take security in your lord security in your savior no form of inferiority at all you don't feel disadvantaged because of the ability of the holy spirit that is on your inside that state of i can do all things to christ who strengthens me that's the voice of the victor it's only men that can speak that way that we end up ever singing the victor song. Now is come salvation and strength. The kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Oh my. You will sing the victor song in the name of Jesus Christ. Part of the things that God accomplishes by giving you encounters is to make you reason outside of the box, outside of your poverty, outside of the limitations you have seen your family locking through on all the days of your growing up. He shows you a possibility that is a departure from your experience, from your knowledge of yourself. He shows you on the mountaintop. Meanwhile, you have lived all your days in the valley. He shows you flying with wings like eagles. Meanwhile, you have been tormented by all the challenges, the storms of life. He's teaching you how to use your wings and your wings in this case is faith our prayer tonight is simple first prayer oh my is lord i believe help my unbelief because all of your unbelief is rooted in the stronghold the stronghold the stronghold the stronghold i want you to look at yourself you can you can you can design your stronghold where you are seated your stronghold has journeyed with you for a long time that you accept it as a reality contrary to the position of the word of God. And so your ability, even though you are mighty, you are mighty like a prince in the spirit. Your stronghold is Satan's altar. 
from whence he depletes your faith from whence he deflates your your capacity you are a giant in the holy spirit you are a giant in god you were not designed to be a slave oh the spirit of god he has spoken over your life and even though no man has ever done that which you believe the lord has called you to do he will make you a pioneer he will cause your face to shine the fact that you missed it some point in your life should not be the reason why the devil's will will come to pass in your experience i saw you a mystery can you pray for this lady and say to the lord affliction shall not arise again second time it is not your portion satan has no jurisdiction over your life he cannot exercise his authority over your destiny <laughs> oh, you have no place here Kibo says and he can't tell it Burasko feta boko makabelaita Shai kompelis ele kompato Braska tete kompele suselaita Ama maraseto mahaila ama Seto mahaila yega Seto masela bohomene Mila saile Mama Maleho Sesano Seta Marasaila Makela Seta Malakori Masatamu Hela Haile 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 Samuno Siasisa Sanatanda Samuno Siasisa Nakondema Samuno Suasi Laise Laise Makande Babo Sani akela babora sina sanda yakena bori basantori akamana laite 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 mama mama oh 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 Thank you for watching and if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.